Hey guys, it's Aaron. And today I wanted to get into level of detail and how you can make sure you're putting the proper amount of detail in your SketchUp models based on what you're gonna use your model for. All right, so elephant in the room, I do realize that the term level of detail is a BIM thing. It means the amount of information. Um, you may work at a firm where you have set levels of detail where level one is different from a level three, LOD one, LOD three, that kind of thing. I, I'm not talking about that stuff. Um, this is strictly, what I'm speaking about is strictly about the amount of detail you're putting into something you're modeling and making sure that it is the right amount of detail for how you're going to actually use that model. So that's what I wanna talk about. Um, level of detail just seemed to be the right way to, to phrase that, even though I knew that term could be considered by some people to have a different meaning. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about having the, the right amount of detail, the right amount of geometry in a model based on what you're gonna use it for. We're gonna take a look at that right now. Okay, uh, right here I have three faucets that I downloaded from 3D Warehouse. It would have been awesome to have the exact same faucet in three different levels of detail, but uh, these were what I was able to track down and find. So um, I'm gonna call these three different amounts of detail, maybe amount of detail, then that doesn't get confused with LOD. Amount of detail, detailness, detailedness, de detail, yeah, we should stick with the amount of detail. So over here on the left, this is a simple 2D faucet, right? You can tell it's 2D because it's flat. <laughs> um, so this right here, this is something you may throw into your model if you don't need three-dimensional views. I mean, a lot of people end up exporting 2D floor plans through layout from SketchUp, and that's it. So they never go in and do any renderings or isometric views or anything like that. If that's the case, something like this slapped onto your sink is gonna do just a fine job of showing that this is a faucet. Keeping in mind that when you actually see it, it might be about that big, right? So see that little, that little set of lines right there? That's representing a faucet. And that's all you need at this point is that little teeny tiny bit of faucet showing up. If that's the case, 2D imagery like this, even, I mean, this this could be dropped in in layout. You could put in your countertops, put a sink on there, and then leave things like this, details like this, like the, the faucet or the sprayer or whatever other piece you have. You might just leave that off and just drop it in as 2D in layout. That works fine too. The advantage of using this is, let's go ahead and double click in here. Let's grab everything here. And I can see this is 80 entities. That includes every edge, every face, um, and see around here, each of these edges of this, this half circle or this uh, arc right here, 80 entities, super lightweight. I mean, that's, that's nothing. I mean, I, that's not gonna, that's not gonna affect my model in any way, shape or form, right? So a lightweight model like this is going to lead to a more performant model. I'm not going to have issues where maybe I'm building a, you know, a condo block and I have, 30 units, and then each kitchen has this in here. Oh, no problems, no problems whatsoever, right? Downside, of course, is as I rotate around this, look at it in 3D, that's not impressive, right? If I want to do a rendering or something like that, I'm out of luck with this guy. This is not going to lend itself to anything other than an overhead view. So I'm not saying you should use this, but this is the lowest level of detail you can create in SketchUp. This is just a 2D representation of 3D models. So it's an option, it's the lowest level. A step up from that is what we have right here. So this is a higher level of detail. It's a 3D model. It's not beautiful. I mean, it's not, it's not like I'm not gonna go in and do a render of this by itself. You can actually see as I'm moving around, you can see the shadows jumping uh, off the surfaces. If I go up to view and I hit show hidden geometry, you can see, you can see right here, this is not uh, you know, this is not made for close-up rendering, anything like that. But what this does do is this does tell me there's a faucet here. This looks great from above. I can render this from the side. I could, I could move around the kitchen. I'm going to see this. 
And honestly, if I come in here and select all this, I've got a couple of containers here. There we go. There's all my geometry, 338. So about four times what I had over here. But like I said, you can tell this is a faucet. You can tell what kind of faucet this is. Uh, if you have an eye for faucets, maybe you even have an idea of whose faucet this is. There's not a maker's mark on here, but uh, this is the level of detail that I would say would work for, uh, you know, 3D views. Um, the nice thing about this is if I had this in, say, say I was doing an, uh, a section cut through my kitchen, seeing that from the side is going to tell me a faucet. It's a faucet just the same as if I saw it overhead. So this is the nice medium. This is the middle ground, I would say. This is the amount of detail that's, you know, the thing about faucets, that I, I say it's about toilets too, is if they show up in imagery, you know, I'm going to be zoomed back. They're going to be about this big, right? Like, if I want to see the, a decent amount of the kitchen, I'm not going to be in here like this. This this faucet should probably, in a normal architectural or design drawing, would not fill up much of the screen. So even if I was like looking at a cabinet view, you know, where I'm looking, here's all my cabinets and here's the faucet, that's probably about as big as it's going to get on the page. So I don't need 10,000 uh, polygons in this faucet to make it do its job as a faucet. And this is really what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about of detail is how much detail, how many polygons do you want to put into this model so that it does its job. So for general architectural construction drawings, this level of detail works just fine. Now, I do have a model that's a step up from there. If I look at this in hidden geometry, you can see I got lots of geometry, right? Look at look at this little 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 button in here cover up the screw hole. Um, yeah, you can see this little, little, little mark right here to make uh, th the little faucet head that I can screw out or unscrew with a wrench. Got the little flat marks in there and the little flat marks are rounded over. Look at that, see all that geometry? Tons of geometry, right? A lot, lot of geometry here. This is, good. Let's, let's find out how much there is. This is a couple uh, levels deep, but I think if I get down here far enough, there we go. Okay, so this has, whoa, wait, hold on. I gotta move a 33,000 entities. So this is like 10 times the geometry that was in our, our previous. This was 300, this is 33,000. So that's not 10 times, that's, that's 100 times. <laughs> Sorry, tried to do math spontaneously right there. Um, so you can see it is a whole lot more geometry. But, and I, I did take the textures off of all these, I painted, or I, 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 I use paint bucket to make everything just the plain white because I wanted to look at them side by side. But you can see as I move around here, over here where we had these softened angles kind of jumping as I move around, see that, that harsh geometry, there's a weird line right there. This, I don't get that. Nice, smooth shadows because I have so many polygons. This right here would be overkill for this view, right? Looking down from above, again, this big, Take your pick here, right? Any of these would work just fine to show that there's a faucet on a eighth inch equals a foot floor plan. Looking at an elevation view, yep, that shows that there's a faucet. I could probably even make out whose who's, uh, faucet this is based on the profile, where the lines are, that kind of thing. I, I could figure that out. This is a good detailed view. In, a, in an isometric view, it's gonna look great rendered out there, looks awesome. The downside is, again, if I'm, I'm doing that condo that has, I don't know, 30 of these throughout the whole building, that's a whole lot of geometry. We're talking about millions of polygons just for faucets. So it's a little too much. Now, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm doing a beautiful render of a kitchen and I want this high poly thing because I'm going to put some chrome on here and it's going to shine and the sun's going to come in through the window and reflect off of it, okay. You know, I get it. I get having the smooth thing there. If if you're a product manufacturer and this is your product, then you might have a render that consists of this. And absolutely, you should have thousands of polygons in here. That is that is exactly what this would be for. For a regular construction drawing, probably overkill. Probably more geometry than I need. But if you're doing that high-level render or that product product imagery, then it makes a lot of sense. So just to back up, 2D, lightest thing you can have, most performant thing you're going to have, 
only going to look good in one view, top-down view, or I mean, you could have this in a profile view too, So, uh, but that's the only way it's going to look good. Over here on the other end, super high res, super polygon dense, not going to be ideal if there's a bunch of these in the model, uh, not where you want to spend that, you know, that, that, that file weight is not on a faucet. And I said, same thing for toilets. I, I, toilets do this too also where it's super easy to get those curves and everything blown up so you have a million faces just in a toilet. This is too much. This is gonna, eventually, if there's multiples in your model, this is gonna cause your model to lag. This guy in the middle, a couple hundred. This is pretty performant. It does the job, you know, from here. If I zoom back to like right here, there are obviously different kinds of faucets, but I can't tell that I'm missing a whole lot from this versus this. So be considered, especially using 3D Warehouse, look at your model, download it into a separate file, open it up, check it out, see if it's the right amount of detail for the job that you are currently trying to do. And that's the crux of this thing, right? Is that when you look at your model and you, you see the geometry in there, are you putting the geometry where you need it? If you're drawing a floor plan, you know, your geometry should be going into stuff like the house, the floor, the, what are the things you need to see in order to build that house from that floor plan? You're doing a render, then you're gonna put stuff into like those curves, those, those fancy uh, entourage pieces. Put the right amount of geometry in to what you need. If you're just doing a, a mock-up, I'm gonna quick see how this, you know, how I might finish my basement, something like that. You don't need a 33,000 face faucet to do a mock-up for a bathroom remodel just not necessary. It's going to slow your model down. We get models all the time on forum, forums.sketchup.com. If you're not already there, you should check it out. But people go, oh, my model's too big. It won't open. It's so slow. It's so long. And you open it up and they have you know, toilets with 2 million faces, a car in the garage with you know, the cup holders detailed inside of it. Awesome models, but not the right amount of detail for what they're trying to use it for. So that's the biggest thing. Put the right amount of detail in for what you're going to use it for, and you'll be pretty happy. Let me know if you've ever run into this before. I'd love to hear about it down in the comments, or if this is new to you and something you're trying. I'd love to hear that too. If you have another idea of what you think would make a good video on our channel, let us know that as well. Have a great day.